Welcome to another episode of Ask Freeman, where you submit the questions and we answer them and you get some of my nonsense advice here. Uh, Chelsea asks, what is your opinion of credit scores? On one end of the spectrum, she says, people are obsessed with it and the other people say it's dumb and that you should try to have no credit score. What do you think? How much effort should I put into my credit score? So we're going to talk about credit scores today. Um, I'm going to give you my short answer, then I'm going to give you some context, and then I'm going to give you my long answer. Okay. Short answer is I think you should get and maintain a good credit score. I don't think you should have no credit score. You should obviously not have a bad credit score, um, but you also shouldn't make all your decisions around what your credit score is and the impact that it's going to have on your credit score, right? Um, so for a little bit of context, quick, what are what a credit score is, what it's good for, what it's not good for, and then more context on my answer. Um, I didn't write any of this out, so we'll see. Hopefully it's still organized in a decent manner. Um, so credit scores are, right, whenever you borrow money, they keep track of your payment history and how much you've borrowed, what, what, how much of you're using, all those things. And they just sum it up, these, these reporting agencies, Equifax, TransUnion, some of these other ones. And they they put out a credit score, which is, a, hey, here's a number. This is, you know, they're, they're good or they're not. And they go anywhere from like five, 550 or something like that on the 550 on the low end to eight. 100 or 820 or something on the hand. I'm not sure the exact numbers. Somewhere in there. And uh, and so if you've got a credit score in the fives or six or even 700, low 700s, like that can be bad. And, you know, kind of mid to upper 700s is, is good and, and 800 plus is excellent or however they break it down. Um, and basically it's based, you know, it, what it does is it tells a new lender at a glance, how likely is it that this borrower is going to be able to pay them back? You know, if I'm, a, if I'm a bank or if I'm an auto loan shop or whatever, and I'm lending you money, what is the likelihood that you're going to pay me back that money? And, and, and so it sums all that up for you. And so what it's based off of, it's based off of a number of factors. And there's three major ones, one being payment history, right? Are you making your payments? If I borrow you money, how confident am I that you're going to pay me back on time every single month, regardless of what's going on else is going on in your life? Because I know if you're just making your payments on time, that eventually I'm going to get all my money back in accordance with the loan. So they want to make sure that you have good payment history. Uh, your credit card use is another big one, right? Um, you know, what, what percentage of the total credit limit you have or that you could take out on your credit card are you actually using? So say that you have a credit card that has a $10,000 credit card limit um, and you you spend like $500 on it a month and you pay it off and, and that's it, right? Well, anything under a thousand or anything under 10%, they're going to look at that very good. Hey, they're only using 10% of their available limit. They're not at risk of like maxing out their card and then rolling that balance over forever. Uh, and, you know, and maybe not paying us back because now they can't afford the interest, any of those things. So 10% or less of your available limit is considered really good. Um, if you use 10 to 30% of your available limit. So in the case of a, a card with a $10,000 limit, that'd be between right a thousand and three thousand dollars that's good. It's not great, but it's good. And if you're using more than 30% of your, your available credit, that's going to reflect poorly and start losing you some big points on the uh, on the credit score. And then derogatory marks. If you've ever had to go to collections, if you've ever failed to, to pay things, um, that's going to look really bad on your credit score as well. So if you have perfect payment, like on time, right? But as soon as you start missing payments or you're late on payments, those, that's going to start hurting you pretty bad if you're using more than 30% of your credit card stuff. And again, this is not that's not you roll over 30%. It's just like whenever it's reported. If you just happen to have more than 30% at the time it's reported, um, then even if you paid it all off the next day, uh, it's still going to count. It's, they're still going to assume that you are carrying that balance. Um, so it can be it can be bad to have a card that you don't use very much of, but it's got a really low limit um, because then it can look like you're you're using more of your credit than than you actually otherwise could be. Um, also, your credit age, right? How long you've had accounts, the number of accounts that you have, and any hard inquiries when you know how often are you applying for credit? Uh, those will also all affect your score. So. Credit score is good then for getting more credit, right? For getting loans and those kind of things. And that's where, you know, obviously people on the credit side, banks, credit card companies, stuff, they love the credit score. Uh, they they sponsor a lot of content about credit scores and how to improve that because they can sell more cards, right? Like Credit Karma is a big website. I actually do use it to keep track of my credit score. Um, and, you know, it's got tips on there, uh, how to improve it, shows you where it, what's you know, impacting your credit scores, all that great. But then constantly it's like, oh, and you can improve your credit by buying this credit card um, or you know, applying for this one or whatever else. And so it's there to sell you more credit. Right? And so that, you know, to Chelsea's point, right, some ends of the spectrum, they're all about the credit score. And like, you know, as Dave Ramsey says, they, they worship at the altar of the credit score. Um, and then 
speaking of Dave Ramsey, right, he's more on the other side of the spectrum of you don't need a credit score. You know, credit score is to get more debt and you shouldn't get in debt. You should pay off all your debt and be debt free and live with that freedom and 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 have instead of having all these payments, you can invest all those payments or give them away or whatever else you want to do. And therefore, since, you know, a credit score score is only for getting debt and you're not going to get any debt, therefore you don't need a credit score and so just don't worry about it. It'll eventually go away and then you don't need it anymore. Um and uh so when would you need to actually get debt, right? We've talked a little bit about debt in the past did a few episodes on them. I can't remember them off the top of my head, but I'll link to them uh, in this this show notes for this episode. So if you go to retirementship.com slash 117, uh, it's 117th episode. We'll have links out to those couple of the other episodes I've done on debt. Um, but, you know, you one, one might you need debt, uh, you know, getting a house, right? Getting a mortgage like most people will, have a more if you get a house, they'll have a mortgage at some point. Eventually, hopefully, you pay that off, right? And it's a, that's a great thing. Um, but you're still often going to have one, or you're going to move, or maybe and, and maybe you don't plan to, right? Oh, I don't ever plan to have a mortgage, but then you get some massive opportunity to, for a great job in another area or, or whatever else, and you still have to, right? Life doesn't always go the way that we plan to, so you're often going to have a mortgage, right? If you uh, open a business, start your own business, right? You get sick of doing something else and you want to do your own thing and you got to start a business and you might need some credit for that to get some business loans. So there are just some things out there and you know that we're not talking about, Hey, you know, improve your credit score so you can get a better, you know, percentage rate on your credit cards that you're, that you're carrying over from month to month. No, that's not why you want a good credit score. And so the reason I think you should get and maintain a good credit score is if you ever need to take out debt that would actually help you in the pursuit of your goals, right? Getting a mortgage, getting a business loan, something like that. It can be really helpful. And this is where I disagree with Dave Ramsey and, and his, his preaching that you should not have a credit score. They should just ignore it completely and let it fall off. Because if you have no credit history, if you have no credit activity at all, you have no open accounts, you don't, so you're not making any payments, it won't reduce your credit score. It will just go away. It'll just go from 750 to nothing. It'll just, hey, we don't have any information on this person. Um, he says, hey, that's good because you're never going to need it. Uh, and, you know, I did a few episodes, actually, in episodes 9 and 10. So if you go to retirementship.com slash 10, uh, 1, 0, it will take you to that episode. And I did a few episodes on is Dave Ramsey wrong and a, on a few of the different things that he teaches and whether or not we agree with those or not. And you can check those out. And this will be one that wasn't in that episode, but I also disagree with Ramsey on is that, you know, you don't know what your life is going to be like. And so to get rid of your credit score and to let it fall off entirely can prove to be a mistake. Right. I know people that had um, that had a mortgage, all these different things, right? Uh, but were letting, you know, let their credit or, or you know, adventure for a while and they were trying to get their house. And, uh, um, you know, and, and Ramsey says, well, hey, you don't need a mortgage because you can, you, they can do manual underwriting. Or you don't need a credit score because they can do manual underwriting to get a, a mortgage. And so they'll check your history and your, your accounts and all these other things and say, hey, can this person, should this person actually have a mortgage? Um, but I know people who didn't have a credit score and went to get a mortgage and they got mortgages that were a percent to a percent and a half higher than the general public could get because they didn't have a credit score, right? And that, and that extra percent, right? And when, when rates were super low, right, in, in 2020 and all these things, and you know, like I have a 2% mortgage right now on a 15 year, it's 2%. Like you're not going to see that forever. And the best mortgage that these people could get were like 3.25, right? And so that, that, yeah, that three quarters of a percent rate on their mortgage is going to cost them uh, I don't think it hit was supposed to hit over a hundred thousand, but it was tens of thousands of dollars in extra interest over the course of that mortgage because they didn't have a credit score. It's not because they were bad with money. It's not because they wouldn't have had a good one if they had if they had had one. It's because they just didn't have one. Um, I know someone else who uh, you know, started his own business and wanted to you know needed to get some some loans for that. Right? And there's a big difference, right, between you know people say good debt and bad debt, and I don't know if if I really you know I usually categorize as bad debt and worse debt. Um, because you don't ever want to be paying payments, but there's a big difference, right, between buying an 80 inch flat screen TV on a credit card and taking out a loan to start a business to build your your you know everything that you want to do for your your life. That's just those are categorically different uses of credit. This person couldn't get the business loan that they needed to get because they didn't have a good score because they didn't have enough credit history to be able to do that, and so it's it's hampering their ability to live their dream because they didn't have a credit score, right? And so that can cause a lot of problems to have no credit score. And so you, you you want to build and maintain a good one so that you can get a mortgage if you need one, uh, even if you don't think you ever will need to. So you can get a business loan if you need one, even if you don't think you'll ever go into business for yourself. Um, all these things still play 
into it. Now, we don't want to worship the credit score either, right? Because at the end of the day, we want to get money, not debt, right? We want to, we want to accumulate wealth, not a whole bunch of credit. Um, and so we don't make all of our decisions based on what, how it's going to affect our credit score. And way too many people think that a good credit score means that you're winning with money. And it does not. A good credit score means you have a good credit score. That's all it means. Okay. So I'd much rather you have, you know, fully funded Roth IRA and a lot going into retirement or, or, or you know, uh, other brokerage accounts and, and the right amount of, of insurances and all these other things than it would have you have a good credit score. Um, but all else being equal, you should also have one. It's not that hard to get a good credit score right? First of all, you need to, you know, keep your, your usage low and none of it, you know, some people think that you need to roll credit you need to pay interest like on a credit card that you need to roll the balance over and, and just, you know, and some people say, oh, just keep a small balance on a credit card and let it roll over so that you can pay that interest and, and help improve your credit score. No, you don't need to do that. You don't need to pay a lick of interest, not a dime in interest in order to have a good score. You just need a couple of accounts that have been open for a long time and that you have a perfect payment history on. In fact, you don't even actually need to have a balance at all because anytime you have a zero balance on a credit card, as long as it's open, every month it counts as an on-time payment, right? So you'll have a 0% utilization, which is less than 10, and you'll have 100% on-time payments. Now, eventually the account will close down if you never use it, right? After six months or a year or something, if you don't use the account, they will shut it down on you. So yeah, every once in a while, you need to throw something on there to keep it open and then you can just pay it off. Or you can, you know, if, if you don't, if you're a debt-free person, you don't want any debt at all, then you know, keep two cards open, right? Or if you have a mortgage already, then you, then you only need one. Um, and you know, put your uh, put your Netflix on it, right? Twelve bucks a month or whatever it is, and then just have it automatically pay. And then in your budget, when you see the, you know, you don't even need to budget with the account. In YNAB, right, you see that $12 go out to pay off the credit card automatically. You can just categorize that as Netflix because you know that's just going to the account that only pays for Netflix and that's it, right? So just a little bit of setup on this can have you keep this account open with zero effort, zero work, zero negative impact on you whatsoever. You won't pay a dime in interest um, and you'll just keep and maintain a really good really low credit card utilization and a really good, long, perfect payment history on that account. And then if you ever do need to, if interest rates ever go down and you want to, to refinance your mortgage, or if you need to move somewhere else, and you know, even if you had a debt-free home, you want to move somewhere else where it's a little bit more expensive and you need to get just a small mortgage just to, to tie you over to the end, you can get that at the best rates possible. And it'll save you tens of thousands of dollars to have a good credit score versus a bad one or no credit score at all. So <clears throat> you want to get and maintain a good credit score because it will save you tons of money in the long run over the course of your lifetime. It's not difficult to do. Avoid, right? People who say that you need to carry a balance, that's not true. Uh, that you need to have a ton of different credit cards that you're going to win a whole bunch by having them, that's not true, right? People spend more using credit cards. We know this than they would otherwise if they use cash or if they use debit cards or if they were really paying attention to things. So there's a whole bunch of negative reasons for debt, for worshiping the credit score, all these things. Um, but in general, right? If you, if you can control all those things, I would still also avoid trying to have no credit score. And you can do that very simply, very easily and save yourself a ton of money. So um, Chelsea, as far as your specific question, how much effort should I put into having a good score, right? I would know what it is if you don't, right? And I, again, I use, I don't necessarily recommend them, but I use creditkarma.com to do mine um, just because I have, I don't really want to switch. There might be other good ones out there too, but it'll tell you your, your scores and, and why. Um, sometimes there's just easy things on there that you can do just to improve it in case you ever do need to take out credit for any reason in the future, right? You, you look at it and you say, oh, uh, I barely use my credit card, but just happens the limit's really, really low on it. And so it shows that I have a high utilization rate, even though I pay it off every month. And I just, you know, it's just a cash flow account. Uh, so I could just ask for a credit limit raise. They'll bump that up, no problem. And then all of a sudden my, you know, even though it's the same balance, it becomes a smaller percentage of my total limit. And then it helps my score, right? Or, uh, oh man, I got a few accounts on here that are really young and it's reducing my total age, my average age of credit. And I hardly ever use those. Like I'm just gonna get rid of those, right? And um, close them down. And then I have a longer average age of credit, right? And that's where other things like, you know, it's not worth it to open up a, you know, a store credit card at every place you go because all those accounts are going to start hurting you, right? Every time, all these really, you know, so you're like, you, you go to Old Navy and like, oh, if you open an Old Navy card, you can save $15 on this, 
pair of jeans. Like that's the dumbest reason to open a cart, right? Don't, and that's the one thing yeah, I should definitely say that. you, you should not be opening up store cards, store credit cards, all these different things for all the different places you shop. I know you're going to save a hundred bucks or 50 bucks. Or if you spend, you know, you know, $3,000 in the first three months, they'll, they'll give you a $150 credit or whatever else. Right. But doing these things and having a bad credit score because of it will end up costing you tens of thousands of dollars in a mortgage interest rate. Right. And so it doesn't matter if you save $15 on a pair of jeans, if it means you pay tens of thousands more on your mortgage. So don't fall for any of those things. And that that's where like Ramsey's coming from with like, just stop paying so much attention to it and stop doing that. Um, and so that, that is a point that should be driven home. Like I would avoid doing those. You get one or two lines of credit, keep them open, keep them paid off, keep the good credit there. If you ever need it, it'll come in handy. So hopefully that helps you Chelsea and anyone else who's interested in credit scores. If you don't, let's say you don't have a credit score at all right now, you don't have any lines of credit. Again, I would, I would just go out, get a card, put Netflix on it, automatically pay it off, throw the card in a drawer somewhere and you're safe. Don't even care it with you. Don't put it in Apple pay, whatever, you know, you don't have to do a lot. If you've got a lot of issues and you check your credit score and it's horrible, maybe you do actually have some work that you should do on that. But again, I'd much rather have you spending more of your time, you know, looking at investing, looking at good other cash flow. Uh, things budgeting, those types of things. And so uh, if I had to rank credit score in terms of overall financial concepts, it would be down. Uh, there's got to be at least 20 topics I'd rather have you spend time on than, than credit score. So it's probably why we waited till episode 117 to talk about it. Hope that helps. Uh, we'll see you next week with another episode. See you next week. Cheers. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did enjoy that, you would love being a part of our free membership community. It's called Retire Membership, and you can sign up today completely for free. When you do that, you get a host of bonus and exclusive content that we don't give out anywhere else. For example, you can buy my book, 3D Retirement Income, on Amazon, but if you become a retire member, we will send you one for free and or give you the audiobook and ebook just for signing up. You also get additional bonus content, exclusive content, including client corner insights from some of the best minds in behavioral investing, workbooks to go along with our workshops to help you get the most out of it, and more ongoing bonus and exclusive content. Some of this you can't get anywhere else, and so we would love for you to join our community. You can join now at retiremembership.com. Otherwise, there's a link in the description of this video where you can sign up. All we want to do is continue to give you the best information out there so that you can retire successfully and stay successfully retired. So you can go in there, do that on our website. There's also a, a longer form podcast. Uh, I think it's episode 80 that will help explain what it is and what we're trying to do with retire membership. But join now for free. Get this and much more exclusive content by joining us today. We look forward to seeing you there and thanks for watching. Cheers.